Yeah, Wednesday. What's up, everybody? Wednesday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great, great trading day yesterday as we saw our markets continue to march higher as we are going to new heights. But are we seeing a little bit of slowing of momentum? There is a little bit of a slowing of momentum that appears to be happening. Uh, now, what, whether that's going to turn into uh, things moving uh Moving a bit lower and the market coming down, we'll see. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you are a returning viewer of the channel, a question of the day, question of the day. If the markets continue to all-time highs and we continue to rally up, do you know how to use breakouts to take advantage of market opportunities? This uh, this actually came up yesterday in a in a chat group that I'm a part of, and and you know oftentimes in big strong markets, people are waiting for a pullback that just doesn't come, and then they miss out on really good opportunities. So what we're gonna do is show a few opportunities for breakouts today, because that's exactly what is setting up uh, both in the NQ as well as the ES. All right. So leave it and leave that comment down below. We really want to make sure the computers know that people are watching. All right, moving to the S&P. We're, we're basically flat from yesterday's close, up about half a point. Um, and when I look at what we see here, yesterday we had identified this 3181 as a potential area if we see weakness for, for a possible breakdown. Now, when I look at this, my eyes immediately go to the shape here that shows uh, you know, uh, this, this swing high right here, this swing high right here, and then this swing high right here. Um, and so my eyes are immediately taken to this shape. Now, a lot of people would consider this a, a small kind of head and shoulders pattern. I don't know that it's a full head and shoulders pattern, but it's definitely a slowing of momentum and a bit of, of a bit of a sign of weakness. Uh, you, you know, if you if you did consider that a, a head and shoulders pattern, you would draw your line right here, as this is the neckline, um, right in there. And typically, after a head and shoulders pattern, you measure from the top of the head to the neck, and that's your expected move on a breakdown from the area. Well, if that occurs and we get the breakdown from the area, that takes us to about here, which is a wick over wick. Uh, unbalanced area. Now, I like the level down here better for a reversal. So if we get that breakdown, I think this 3138 is a good area. Now, does that mean I'm taking it on a breakdown of this neckline? Heck no. Um, I still need basing in front of this blue line. Remember our rules on breakouts. I need three touches. I need basing immediately before the level. And I need room to roam. In this case, I would have all three provided that I get the basing. Now, what about to the upside? Well, to the upside, if I go and look at this on a on a daily chart, um, you know, looking at the daily chart, we ha we see that we are just below our all time high. Our next supply level is at this gap fill area right in here, so there is room for price to continue to move a bit higher. And so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna look at this area up here as the potential breakout point above this level. I've got two touches. I just need basing in front of this area in order for price to move higher. Uh, in the NASDAQ, I get a very similar picture. Now, in the NASDAQ yesterday, I did you know, throw this out there as a potential flyer to take a short off of this level, knowing that it's not the greatest area. So we did a confirmation, and it never gave us a confirmation entry. Right? It popped right through the level, which is what you would expect in this kind of a market condition. And so you know, this high of here of uh, 10,020, call that 10,020 right up there, we'd have to get basing in front in order for us to have an opportunity to get long. Now, there is a little wick over wick area located right down in here where we could see uh, a pullback into this zone as well as a bit of a reversal. Moving over to the Russell, if we take a look at the rut today, the rut yesterday, we did have a little bit of a, of a supply area here, which gave us about a two to one move away for a small profit. We didn't get the quality basing for the breakdown that we would need, unfortunately. Uh, but we did come into here. Now, this is actually a really interesting picture because we came in once, moved away, came in a second time, moved away a bit less. And then the third time in, which happened overnight, we actually based inside of the level. Now, typically... That is the setup for price to break higher. When I see a level that we trade into it three times 
And the third time we base inside of it, I expect it to break up. Um, because we're, we're, that means that we're eating away at the sellers. In reality, we added more sellers to this area, right? More sellers came in, which is why the basing occurred and then fell away. So that, in my mind, is the single biggest reason. That goes back to the S&P level we were talking about earlier and the fact that the S&P is showing a weakness and, and, and new you know, slowing of momentum. We were unable to create that new high. The Russell's actually kind of the canary in the coal mine for that. So similar pattern here in the Russell that we have in the S&P, except the difference was is that the S&P, we've got rising lows, whereas in the Russell, those lows are the same, right? So if I take a look um, at, the, at the price pattern here, we see rising lows in the S&P, while in the Russell, those lows are actually even, you could, you could even go so far as to say that they're lowering lows, Right, so the Russell showing a little bit more weakness than the S and P in general today. Now, this breakout line is not giving us any true basing in front of it. Although, um, I think that the that the uh, that the breakout is probably the better uh, the better trade and the better setup. But as far as today goes, we may not get quality enough basing to make this trade make sense. And so, looking a bit higher into a potential reversal trade. If I go to like the 15 minute chart, we have a pretty good level right up in here for a, a trade on the 15 minute. Don't know that we're going to retest it to be quite frank. Um, but if we do, that would be a pretty good level for a possible reversal. Now I'm going to put it in purple. And by the way, why do I put these in purple? Well, because I know I found it on the 15 minute chart. And that gets very, very important. You know, w that's very important when looking at six candle rule and basing before the level because I'm going to use this the 15 minute candle to determine the six candle rule as also as well as basing before the level now uh, taking a look at our crude oil markets uh, we're continuing to analyze the September contract yesterday we looked at this area right here on the 15 minute chart and that was a small stop out no ifs ands or buts about it price came blowing right through that area did not get us the reversal um uh, and then we saw price kind of hover around there. So I think that we could have a breakout candidate below here, provided that I get, you know, just a bit of basing immediately in front of the level, which I'm just about there, not quite. Um, but I think there's a chance price could come back down with a target of about 37.78, somewhere in that region. Uh, looking at gold as our next market. We have continued to rally up in gold. Uh, no new levels to add for today. There was no quality demand created yesterday that I want to lean on. No quality supply. And so, for those of you that have been that have been using the uh, the iron condors that we've been talking about, yesterday was a good day because you came a little closer to the upper range. You you moved away from the lower, and you should have expiration coming on Friday um, if you are using those. Next, looking over to bonds and currency markets. So in the ZN, we did have a retest into our little 15-minute uh, level in the, uh, in the bond market. Price came back up into this level. Now, six candles later, we had gone nowhere. And so what do we do after that, right? So six, our six-candle rule kicks in. Um, you know, we had moved a little bit, but not a ton. Even if you take your stop and move it to break even, you're still in the trade. At this point, I would say it's more than safe to take your stop and move it up to 137, 230 to lock in some profit, right? Lock yourself in a bit of profits. So that trade worked out pretty well. What I now need to do is remove that level because it's no longer a valid level going forward. So looking at this on the, uh, on the four hour time period, uh, as I uh, as I kind of zoom in on this, on the four hour time period, we we see that that our trend has really started to kind of come back up. We are coming into this wick over wick four hour supply area up above us, so I do need to be aware of this wick over wick four hour supply area up above us. When I cut that down to the one hour chart, I'd say still a fairly wide zone, um, but not a terrible level, not formed at a horrible time of day. You could trim that level down a bit if you really want to. My downside with trimming this down is this wick 
right here. This gray can this gray candlestick, for those of you that can see it, is a very important candlestick. Why is it so important? Chuck, why why do I care about one candlestick? Well, remember, wicks are areas where price happened. And this tells me, this wick tells me that we had a rally up here, a little bit of a base, and then a nice drop away. The red candle was the drop away. This gray candle tells me that price came back up in here and retested this level, right? Thus making the level that much weaker. So while it's a wick over wick on a four-hour chart, I don't typically look for levels on a four-hour chart. I look for levels on the hourly chart. So I don't know how well that level will hold because of that gray candle giving me the retest. It might hold very well, um, but I'm not willing to put my hard-earned money at play there only to see my hard-earned money get taken away because it's a fairly low probability environment. So I'm going to look to this demand area here down below formed uh, right around the, the German market opens. The, and so I think that could be a decent little spot on a, uh, on a pullback. All right, next, looking over to the Aussie. So in our Aussie position, we did come into our 60-minute level. One, two, three, four, five, six candles later, the market was had gone nowhere. So it told us, okay, time to get out of this trade. Uh, so if you did a set it and forget it in the overnight, uh, then that's going to be a little bit tough. And the downside of doing a set and forget in the overnight is that we got a little bit of this basing here before the level, and you may not have seen that, depending on when you turned in for the night. So that one should have been a uh, a small loss if you got if you t if you took that position, not a whole lot of opportunity in that one um, because it just didn't didn't give us that follow through that we were looking for. So now I have no real levels to lean on at the moment. We may get a basing for a potential breakout, but it's not formed as of yet. Uh, in the euro, we did get a bake uh, a breakout above here. We didn't get the quality basing I look for for a for a good breakout, but we did get the breakout area here. Um, if you if you didn't get in on that, which I wouldn't blame you for not getting in on that. Same thing with this one. We're not getting, we didn't get the quality breakout basing in here. Uh, if we get a pullback, however, there's a little tiny wick over wick on the hourly chart right here where that pullback could be a valuable area. Uh, in the Canadian dollar, so our Canadian dollar, we did make it up into our level yesterday. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, the market had started to make a move, but then we kind of went against it, and it gave you plenty of time to take your stop and move it to break even, realizing this isn't following through the way we thought it would. Um, it, now, it's still technically, I mean, your stop would have to go up above here. You may have been stopped out in the overnight if you didn't move your stop to break even, but th the market told me it was going to have a really hard time going anywhere right? Um, now, I will say that we are not above this area here to for price to kind of pop above this 74.87, and that would be the next level where we would need to see a basing for price to get above for me to get anything. Oh, look, an update just came in. Remember, uh, at Trader's Army, as we update trades, you get a notification just like this when an update shows up uh, in our trade feed. All right. That was a like totally unplanned, but it worked out pretty well. Justin must have just put in a trade. So thanks, Justin. Um, so looking at our 60-minute uh, levels on the Great British Pound and the Japanese Yen, we had a potential breakdown area in the pound that price just kind of hovered above and never came back to. And then we're coming up to the supply area here on a 15-minute chart, but we're basing in front of the level. So... Basing before the level on a reversal trade is the kiss of death, as we all have heard me say over and over again at nauseum. Um, and I don't want to play with the kiss of death. I want to I want to play with the as much life as possible. And so um, that's what I'm going to look for is a, a good opportunity to get in on this thing. And right now, I just don't see a great demand area on a pullback. There is this uh, this level down here, but I mean we're freaking far away from there. So, I mean, I'll, I'll highlight it, but I don't anticipate us getting there today. Um, I think you're going to be better off, just like just about everything else, if you get quality basing for a potential breakout. Japanese yen, we came into the level yesterday. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, we were right back where we started. So following our rules, that would tell us exactly what to do. 
um, in that position. If you didn't do it there, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, you were right back to where you started. Um, if you didn't do it there, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, you still hadn't been stopped out. Now, that's 18 hours you had to realize that this damn thing wasn't going to work. So when you see that happen, stop trying to hope it will work. Just get out of the trade. Um, too often, people stay in the trade way too long when the market clearly is telling them to bail, right? And so we're seeing nearly a parabolic move up in our Japanese yen um, coming to a four-hour supply area. But this four-hour supply area here is really a retest of this level here to the left, right? And so this is not the freshest of four-hour supplies. It may pull us back down. And if it does pull us back down a little bit, then we would look to a demand area to get long. And I think that demand area makes the most sense as right about here. If we base inside of this level, we may see a breakout for price to continue to move higher. All right. So covered a lot of... <clears throat> A lot of stuff today, a lot of concepts. If you have any questions, as always, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will talk to you soon. See ya.